sticks to silicon. No paint or other type of covering or other type of sealant. For example, nothing sticks to cured silicon around your hatch. Nothing sticks to the area around your hatch where the excess from the hatch installation was wiped 10 years ago. Nothing sticks to the area at the base of the mast where the overspray from silicon dry lube had been sprayed every Wednesday night before the race. Of course, that all said and done, silicon is a very useful product when it is carefully considered and applied in the right manner. For example, Sikaflex, ubiquitous urethane producers, also supply silicon products. To the uninitiated, you pick up a tube of 291, which is urethane, Sikaflex 291, and you pick up a tube of MS Bond, MS Bond 20 bucks, 291 40 bucks. What's the difference? They both say they do exactly the same thing on the packet. Okay. 291 is the general Sikaflex um, um, urethane product for general purpose use. There are a raft of other things and there are a raft of other manufacturers. 3M make it. You can buy um, lesser known brands as well of, of urethane products. MS Bond. So we've got pretty much MS modified silicon is what MS means. And we can also have neutral cure silicon. Both of those two products are sold as adhesive silicon sealers. Mm. Urethane general purpose um, seeker products are also told, sold as adhesive sealers. All right? They're worlds apart in terms of their um, construction, their strength, their molecular strength. Um, Silicon is not as strong as urethane. That's primarily what you're doing in terms of the bond strength of these two different things. The other thing by using silicon, even any modified silicon, any type of silicon at all, anywhere on the boat, you now need to stick with silicon products in that area. Let's pick something like a hatch. We've got a four deck hatch or something and it's been weeping around the side. We eventually get around to doing the job because that's how it works on boats. Um, we pop the, the hatch out, take all the screws out. We're very careful about leaving the, levering the aluminium frame out. It comes out reasonably simply. That's the first clue that you've got silicon on there. The second, silic the second uh, clue is you take a dry, clean cotton rag and rub it on hot until it starts warming up on your fingertips on the um, on the silicon and it will gall and ball it will it will come off in little balls and start decaying in that manner whereas um, urethane won't so very easily incidentally and rather irritatingly if you're going to do that job pour um, literally fluid amounts of ter turpentine mineral turpentine round that hatch with either silicon or urethane and when you start going in there with razor blades and, and knives and things it will make your life and lubricate those razor blades and knives it will start going it will make that job a lot easier right here's the bombshell if you have to um use if you find that you've got silicon on there or you recognize you've got silicon on there or you've grabbed the ear of a boat builder who was close by and said is this silicon or urethane they said it's silicon you now need to mechanically clean all of the silicon off, as in scrape, usually plastic scrapers or soft scrapers, um, scrape the actual physical material off, and then you need to go 50 to 100 microns down in the substrate, so the paint, the gel coat, whatever it is, all around the area, the, the entire area, bearing in mind the person when they were fitting this, what happens to you? You squeeze a whole heap of glue on there to make sure you've got enough, all right? Then what happens? You put the thing in, right, then what happens? Goo everywhere, everywhere where there was silicon and you wiped it off has now got silicon contamination. Ah. All right, nothing sticks to silicon. So we need to be um, very mindful about this idea that, uh, except silicon, right? So if you've got the hatch scenario, don't be scared about using a modified or neutral cure silicon to rebond it in. Absolutely fine every day of the week. Just don't use Selly's All Clear bathroom sealant or you know some other cheap non-modified non-neutral mm. cure 
um, just seal it, seal it, because it won't last more than five minutes. Well, I've always tended to you, you, you silicon, but just because, but not from a position of any any knowledge. Yeah, because I've always assumed it's better. Right. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. But well, it's there's. Technically, you can achieve as good a... Mm, that's not entirely true. The thing with silicons is there's no other product except silicon. Silicon is just sticky by its inherent nature, right? Yeah. Whereas with something like... Um, you look at these fancy lagoons and things with their bonded-in windows, right? What are, how are they achieving that in the hull and where the perspex is actually becoming structural? It's got enough bond strength in the urethanes that they're using. They use specific yeah. primers with the urethane, very specific. For every given material known to mankind, Sikaflex makes a specific primer for that material. Right. Glass, perspex, wood, concrete, fiberglass, whatever it is. And if you prime it all correctly as per the recipe on the Sikaflex website, for example, you will achieve the kind of bond strength where you'll be destroying the substrate or the glass or the whatever you're bonding to remove to it because yeah. it's so strong and that's another factor in choosing what to use in the first place because it will tear the boat apart if you do the whole job really really well <clears throat> but obviously if you're putting a bonded window in the side hull of your boat side of the hull you want it to be utterly utterly fastened to the to the hull of the boat, right? So and that's how. The boat so you definitely wouldn't want to use you silicon to put it. Put it put You'd never not something like a bonded no, window in the hull of a lagoon.